Hi, I'm Fabian Edel and I've recently written an article about spreading and memory of histone modifications for bioassays. Histone modifications can determine how cells interpret the genetic information and they distinguish the different cell types in our body from each other that exert very different functions although they contain the same genetic material. Deregulation of histone modifications is thought to drive several kinds of disease including cancer which underscores that it's important to understand how histone modifications are regulated. Now, these modifications have some fascinating properties that I'll try to illustrate in the following. So suppose that these little spheres represent histone octomers around which the DNA strand is wrapped, and these blue pins represent histone modifications. So what some of these modifications can do is that they can spread along the chromatin fiber, transforming small modified domains in much broader modified domains. If the histone modification that spreads is a repressive histone modification, like trimethylation at lysine 9 of histone 3, genes that sit within this modified domain will become repressed. This phenomenon is called chromatin position effect because it makes genes sensitive to their position either within the domain or outside of the domain. A second phenomenon is that of memory, because what happens during replication is that half of the nucleosomes will be replaced by nucleosomes that carry no modification or a different modification. So what cells can do is that they can restore the original domain by kind of copying the histone modifications to the new histones. There are several models that have been proposed to explain how histone modifications can propagate from one nucleosome to the next one. One of these models assumes that a histone modifier, which is represented by this blue ball here, binds to modified histones, contacts the neighboring histone, and modifies it, leading to linear spreading of modifications along the chromatin fiber until a boundary factor, which is represented by this clamp here, would be encountered. Another model assumes that histone modifiers bind to modified histones, contact other nucleosomes via looping interactions. Because the chromatin polymer is dynamic, leading to looping-driven spreading of modifications from one nucleosome to another via long-distance interaction. Yet another model says that histone modifiers bind very transiently to modified histones, so that propagation around these sites would be pretty inefficient, but that histone modifiers bind strongly to modified histones that in addition carry a particular DNA sequence Q, which is represented here in black. So in this model, spreading would efficiently occur around these specialized nucleosomes that are modified and have this DNA sequence Q via looping contacts, but not around modified histones that lack this DNA sequence Q. So one of the scopes of the paper is to compare the predictions of these different mechanistic models to each other and to reason experimental data and to see which elements on the molecular level translate into which phenomena on the cellular level. For example, recent experiments in fruit fly and fish and yeast have shown that histone modifications can only be maintained in the appropriate DNA sequence context, which actually favors the last model I've talked about. In the future, it would be interesting to see if our current models hold true and if there is a common biophysical mechanism that underlies spreading and maintenance of very different histone modifications across the genome. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to use the insights into these mechanisms to precisely tailor histone modifications in disease.